Hey, Megan. Would you be able to get the um, Google Drive link? Yep, uh, I'm working on it. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. We're going to start in uh, 10 minutes. Until then, um, get your culinary selves together. We're going to have a fun chef theme uh, session coming up. We're going to serve up career development in just a little bit. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's see, I'm Dave Halverson with the Transition Project. Uh, this morning, I have the pleasure of introducing two very creative speakers. We're fortunate here in South Dakota to have uh, Megan Tatum and Andrea Deem uh, assist us with our students with disabilities as long as, in addition to all of the other students in, in South Dakota schools. Uh, let's see, Megan is a specialist with SD My Life or Zello, I think is the newest iteration of that product. And Andrea is the school counseling outreach person. Uh, both of them are career development specialists and they work closely with our transition project. And, and again, uh, very creative as you can see today. With that, we'll turn it over to you ladies. Thank you, Dave. Um, we've been working with, with Dave for a while as well. Um, he's been wonderful to work with as are all of the TSLP representatives. So thank you all very much. We're really excited to be here today. Um, and Dave, you pronounced my name correctly. I have a very non-phonetical name. So anytime somebody does that, it's extra kudos. Uh, my name is Andrea Deem. And as Dave said, I work with school counselors throughout the state in South Dakota with the Department of Education, but also with career development in general. And another added bonus, I work with graduation requirements as well. Yes, and I am uh, Megan Tatum, as he had noted, and I work with SD My Life and it's powered by Zello. So previously it was powered by Career Cruising and now um, it's Zello, same company, but um, just a new pro newer product. And um, I work with career development K-12 as well. So we're excited to get started. Awesome. So you are here today um, with Serving Up Career Development. We are not chefs or, well, <laughs> Megan's probably a better cook than I am, but you can just pretend we are with our backgrounds today. Um, the, one of the best things about Zoom is you can find virtual backgrounds for just about everything, including cooking. So I found a Food Network one. Uh, Megan, I think you're at a, a bistro maybe? Sure. Yeah. Looks wonderful. Quite delightful. Okay. So here we are. We're going to say, hey, hey, we're shaking our heads in our, our PowerPoint <laughs> slide here. Um, we want to make sure you have the best experience ever. Um, and so we will have some quotes throughout this whole thing, but keep in mind, we typically do this type of presentation in purpose, but or in, not in purpose, it's always purposeful, <laughs> in person, um, but we're, we're gonna give you the best Zoom experience we can. And so here's our first quote from Chef Jacques Torres. Always work with a good chef, someone who can give you direction, inspiration, and can set an example. You need to work with a leader, a person who will teach you how. We hope that we um, provide some inspiration for you today. So we want to get started with um, just briefly going over ways you can connect with us today. So you can um, mute or unmute your line if we ask you to participate in some of our activities. So we'll be going through various activities today and we may ask for your input. So one way you can do that is to mute or unmute. So um, if you keep yourself muted while we're presenting, then we don't have to ask, can you hear me now? Or um, can you mute your, mute your line? So the other way you can do it to interact with us is um, to share your video. So we can, we have multiple screens so we can see you guys and present at the same time. So do we want the audience on the left or the audience on the right? Uh, we definitely want the more excited audience or engaged audience. So if you 
show your video. It's okay if you're in your home attire. I think we're all in that, that setting right now, so we're okay with that. Um, but we'd love to interact with you. We might ask you to participate using your video as well. And then another way is the chat. So we wanted to show you the chat that shows up at the bottom. There are a couple activities today. We will ask you to type things in the chat box. If you don't want to click back and forth between the PowerPoint and the chat box, you can click on the three little dots that pop up and say more, and you can merge um, that to your window. So then you'll be able to see the presentation and the chat box at the same time. You don't have to do that. If you know how to use the program and you have a different method, that's just one way um, to interact with us as well. And then the last way is if you click on participants at the bottom, you will have the option to interact with us. So you can raise your hand if you have a question, you can um, yes, no, like things, clap, any of those things are great. So I just wanted to show a couple ways of how you can interact with us in our presentation or how your students can interact with you um, if you decide to do any of these virtually as well. I love that arrow, it just pops around. <laughs> yeah. And then we lastly, we'd like to ask you um, for, to get a piece of paper and a pencil. We have a couple activities where you'll just write some things down. And so if you have a blank sheet of paper or if you have a notebook that you're working in, that'll work too, just a pen and a paper. So we'll give you a, a little bit of time here to grab a pen and a paper. And you don't have to show any of the things you write down. We want this more for you um, because normally we'd be handing out a couple papers that you'd be writing on. And we aren't, obviously we're not together in person. Um, so they'll be for you to be able to follow along and stay engaged. Everybody got a pen and paper? Anybody who was on camera, if you can nod when you do, then we know you're good. Perfect. Thanks, Ramona. I can definitely see your nod. Perfect. We got some okay. thumbs up as well. Perfect. You want this one? Sure. So we, um, as Andrea had noted, we have sprinkled some quotes, some of our favorite quotes that we always talk about during our, our serving up career development presentation. And I, this one's a personal favorite. I like this one. Where there's a whisk, there's a way. So let's get started. Ooh, this is my favorite part. Um, I love having engaging programs that can help us get to know each other. And also this is a really good way to us, for us to know how much you already know about career development. So this is a program called Mentimeter. If you've never used it before, guess what? You're gonna get to use it right now. So lucky you. And if you've used it already, guess what? You're still lucky because you'll get to use it again. Um, so you'll go to menti.com. I'm just gonna pull up my um, thing. This, we'll show you this later. This is one of the resources you get. Um, it's the Google Drive link that has been in the chat box. We'll have it on upcoming slides as well. But this is Mentimeter.com. I'm going to show you from the educator side. It's completely free unless you want to pay for a bigger expanded version, but I'm um, maybe too cheap for that. I hate to word it that way, but I don't want to pay for, for it. I want to use the free version. So you just go here and then you're going to go to Menti.com and on here it'll tell you the code that you enter in. And whether you are on your computer or if you want to use your smartphone, go for it. But you just go to menti.com, you'll enter in the code 107123. So once again, go to menti.com, you'll enter in the code 107123. If you don't feel comfortable with this, you can just follow along and that's completely fine as well. We'll give you just a couple seconds here to get on there. If you do get on, um, would you mind just nodding your head and letting us know that you're on it? Kind of helps us gauge, do a little temp check to see if people are on. You can click the little heart button as well. I can see there's hearts coming yeah. on. Does anybody like the Muppets? Because this guy's on the Muppets. So when I think of, of crazy chefs, I think of this one. Okay, we got 27 people on here. Thanks for doing a thumbs up, Julie. I did see you, thanks mm -hmm. a lot. All right, thanks, Becky. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go on then. And I'm toggling between two monitors, so I have to go like this to see the corner of this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so true or false, you can only facilitate career development in person. And it's okay if you don't know the answer to this, it's a way for us to get to know where you're at and also see of an example of where you can engage students online or also a way to um, just get a pretest to see where people are at. 
So we have four, 42 people that say false, 43. Wow, the answers are climbing. Anybody want to try true just for fun? Nobody? Bueller? Oh, there we go. Thank you to that one. That person. was me. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. It makes it more fun. All right, so then I can just hit the enter button or I can just do this and they'll show me the correct answer. Um, the correct answer is false. So um, we are going to show you today that you can do career development virtually if you have to. Um, you're going to walk away with some activities that you can use with students. Um, whether you choose to use them or not, it's totally fine with us. That's the ball's in your court at that point. But we want you to be inspired by some ways that you can have your students considering um, career in general. So we'll go to the next question here. Which of the following resources can you use for career exploration or career preparation? So any of those. Is it SD My Life, the South Dakota Department of Labor and Regulation, South Dakota Department of Education, AKA us um, and other people, <laughs> or all of the above? I see somebody has raised their hand. Do you have a question? Or were you just participating? All right. Wow, it's still climbing. Look at that. We have some pretty smart people in here. Um, while SD My Life is one of the resources you can use, it is not the only one. And actually, all of these are resources that you can use for career development. Um, so career exploration and preparation. I would say also for career awareness as well. We're going to show you all of these coming up here in our presentation. And our next question, how do you feel about using career development activities when working with students in transition? So this one will create a Wordle. Heads up, if you use this with students, there is a profanity filter on it. So um, if any of you want to try throwing out an F-bomb, I don't think it's going to work. Um, please don't, since this is being recorded. <laughs> But otherwise, just want to let you know that there should be a profanity filter on this. So I see some excited, creative, happy, fun. Looks like there's a few people who put fun down. Usually the larger the words, the more that they have been um, chosen by other people. Um, so I saw overwhelmed earlier as the big one. Now it shows excited and happy. And it's okay to have all of these feelings. Actually, it's okay to feel more than one at the same time, because when you think about career development, it can be a little bit overwhelming, but also really exciting because you can do so much with it. Wow, this is amazing. You know, um, one of the cool things about using Mentimeter with the Wordles is it tells you a story really quickly about where people are at. And all of you, um, you really have good spelling, by the way. I would say if someone had a spelling error, I wouldn't care. That's totally fine. I don't think all your students, I don't know if all of the students I used to work with would have their spelling all together, especially in today's technology age, too. Um, I saw fr frustrated sometimes. Yeah, it can be frustrating at times. I see important, definitely important. Um, excited, happy, fun, love it, useful. There's so many great words here. Okay. We're going to go on to the next question. I think this is the end, actually. Um, and so we're going to embark into our session with our activities. We will, if we have time, we will go back to this again, and we'll see how you feel at the end of this. It's a really good way to gauge if we did our job like we planned to do today. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that, and we will get back to our slideshow. So once again, that is Mentimeter.com for you to set up a free account. And then when you share one for people to participate in, you use Menti.com. Uh, free account, it lets you do about three questions per, um, like per subject. So I could only do three questions today, but then you can add as many images as you want. And they have a library of the animated images, which I call GIFs. You might call them a GIF. Whatever works for you works for me there. Um, but just wanted to let you know about a program that you have in your toolkit now that you can use. Do you want this one? 
Sure. So this icon will have throughout the entire presentation and it is just um, noting the things we would normally do in person. So we're not going to, you're not going to miss out on anything today, but we wanted to make sure that we're filling your bank fuller um, with things that um, we would do. So normally in person, we would do an activity called clickers or a pretest called clickers, pretest, post tests, any kind of assessment. Um, this one, the students, a little icon that looks like a, a three with a hole in it or an E with a hole in it and backwards three, it'd be an E. Um, that's called a clickers card and every student would get a clickers card and they would be able to use that and the teacher has a device that they scan the room with. So we just encourage you to go out and, and look at clickers, just another great resource for being able to do pre-test, post-test type activities. And you know, you could, so you get to print out these cards for free. Um, so it only costs you printer ink and paper essentially. But do you see where it says like letter B, letter C, letter A, or I think that's a D actually. Um, you could put a shape on there if you wanted, if that was easier for your students to see, or if you are working with some young students. Does anybody work with elementary students as well? Some people, okay. Julie, I can see you very well on my <laughs> screen, so thank you. Um, Danielle, thanks for raising your hand. Um, so this will be really good with elementary as well. And so you could draw shapes if that's easier than the, the letters, whatever works for you. Just know that all you have to do is the kids, they hold up this paper and then you just scan it with an app on your phone or on your um, iPad, whatever. And then it picks them all up simultaneously. It's pretty cool. So we wanna let you know about that one. Okay, so this is our menu of what we're going to go over today. I know that we are going to be probably the ones before lunch break. Is that correct? So we're building up an appetite for you, not just for career development, but also for lunch. Um, so we're going to go through our hors d'oeuvres first. So we have a couple of different activities that are K plus, so you can use them at any grade range. Um, we've used them with adults. We've used them with students, just any, any grade range as well. So we have two different activities. Um, one is the career, let's do ABCs, career ABCs first. We're actually in career oh, deck. Oh, this first. is career deck. <laughs> well, but we'll go to the other ones in a little bit. <laughs> okay, sounds great. Okay, so career deck. We have a couple different activities for this one as well. So we have that icon for your paper and pencil. What we would like you guys to do is we'd like everybody to think of a career and write that down. Um, it can be anything, like you can think like a kindergartner. So my son would say a robot expert. My daughter would say a princess. If you can be anything, use your imagination, or you can use um, a career that you still wish to become. You can use something that um, a middle schooler or a high schooler might think of. Any career, we'll go ahead and have you guys write your career down. And then um, we'll do two different activities. So we'll do one that Andre and I will demonstrate for you, and then we'll do one as a group. So. The first one we'll do is like 20 questions. So if you guys have ever played the game 20 questions before, um, you normally we would hand out the cards and the students wouldn't, wouldn't get to pick their career. They get the one that's like handed to them. But today virtually we're going to have you guys um, use the card that you picked or the career you wrote down. So I'm going to write a career down and I will have Andrea ask me yes or no questions to uh, try to guess my career. And it's called career deck, like a career yes. deck of cards. Let me just write that down there. Good question, Mary. Thanks for asking. Um, so Megan has written down a career, correct? You have one yep. down? Yep. All right. I'm going to ask yes or no questions. That's how you play 20 questions. Um, does this person work outside of the house or inside of the house? That's not yes or no, but I will say... I mean... <laughs> Outside, yes. Does this person work outside the house? Okay, yes. And there's times when I'm going to screw this up. <laughs> um, does this person need a two-year degree? Uh, no. Does this person need a certificate? Mm, so I'm going to provide more information, a license. Okay. Does this person work with kids? Yes. Okay, so they're outside the house. They work with kids. Does this person teach? No. Does this person work with a school? Yes. 
does this person coach? No. Does this person clean? No. You guys does, can put your guesses in the chat box too if you guys have guesses before Andrea. Does this person drive? Yes. Does this person drive a bus? Oh, LaShawn says bus driver, is that right? <laughs> yes. All right, so that's how you play 20 questions. Um, we did a practice one yesterday and she had power linemen. <laughs> And that I could hard not one. guess that one for the life of me. Um, and so if you do have this and you do play it, you might want to drop some hints in there. Um, and then if you have the student um, be the one with the career and you ask questions, um, you may want to tell the student that that student can give some hints as well. So also uh, Megan did a really good redirection when I asked the question that wasn't yes or no which I didn't even know I did that until I did. <laughs> um, and I think that's okay to do as well, to redirect. So, well done. Okay, are we ready for the next part of it? Yeah. The raise your hand one. one. Yeah, so another activity we like to do in person, um, which you can do virtually as well, and we, that's kind of why we showed you how to turn on your videos or raise your hand. Uh, it's called raise your hand if. So again, we hand out all these cards, one to every person and um, their career, they all have a different career on them. Um, and they all have the visuals on all the cards as well. And you'll get the deck in our file. Um, but we, um, Andrea or I, or the facilitator will say, um, raise your hand if, so you guys all have a career written down and Andrea and I can take turns saying, raise your hand if, and if you, your career does that, you'll just raise your hand either on the camera or, um, you can raise your hand in the little interaction, however you want to do it, or you can just think to yourself on how you would do it as well. So I'll go ahead and start, and I will say, um, raise your hand if your career works outside. Okay, we have a Ooh. few hands raised, I see. Some they're doing it through the participant part, that's great. Um, raise your hand if your, per your career works with sharp objects. We have a few. So I would say raise your hand if your career could work with a wedding. Some of you do. And our goal is not to guess your career. It's more for you to um, think of different parts of the career itself. So this is becoming aware of different aspects of the career or also your values and work condition, conditions with it. Like raise your hand if your career would need a four-year degree. All right. How many of you put teacher down by just by chance? Uh -huh. Anybody? <laughs> I always am curious if some people choose that one. How many put farmer down? That's one I usually think of because I'm married to one. Um, yeah, there we go, Julie, Sierra Fingers, yes. Um, so it's always funny to guess what, what ones there are. Did anybody put like, a, I don't know, a rocket scientist or anything like that? Um, typically people don't if they have to pick one, but I would really venture out to um, even think of some that are hot careers or ones that people don't always consider. So Can that I is, oh, go ahead. I was just saying our career deck has like, I don't know the exact number, but it's like 30 some careers, maybe more than that, that are all over the place from anywhere from um, president to um, there's zookeeper, there's all kinds of stuff on there. So if you were to use the, the deck with students, um, there's all kinds of, there's a fisherman, there's a, just all kinds of different careers on there. So it really gets kids thinking different ways. And then we also, um, a lot of times, instead of raising your hand, we'll have the kids hold up their career because they like to look around and see the others. And it's also fun to see, um, have conversation about it as well. So like the wedding one always gets people thinking about um, who do you need for a wedding and how can, a lot of times the students will try to find ways to make their, their career fit into a wedding. So for example, a student might hold up a zookeeper and you could be like, well, maybe you're releasing pigeons at your wedding. There's always creative ways to, to bring in the students' ideas and, and encourage their thoughts too, so. Um, an elementary school counselor <clears throat> is the one who provided this lesson. And he said that he may have some students that try to be kind of smart Alex with it. So you just call them out and have them explain how it would work. And um, honestly, it helps them foster some creativity in their answers, which 
is a key skill that we try to look for kids to have, right? Some creativity. So, so you can put your, your students on the spot if you have to. Yes, and so this icon at the top again is the things we would do in person. So normally in person, we would hand out a card to everybody or have the students pick a card, and then we would give you the lesson plan after doing the activity as well. So all of those things are on the Google Drive, which we have a link here. They're also posted, um, our Google Drive link is posted on the TSLP web event website as well. So I'm gonna show you real quickly what it looks like. Just um, some of us, like myself, are visual. This is what it looks like when you click on the link or you access it from the TSLP website. Um, so there is a link to everything, even our slide deck, Mentimeter, Plickers, career deck, what we just went over, and then more. So just so you're aware of that part. All right. Okay, a chef must think like a scientist, organize like an accountant, inspire and motivate like a warrior, move like a track star, plate like an artist, and cook like a grandma. Why do we have that quote in there? We want you to think about there's multiple aspects to a career. And so um, I'm sure that we're preaching to the choir to a certain degree, but when you think about a career in general, um, we also think about what, what is important to us. So it's not just about how much money you're gonna make. It might be about benefits are better. It might be about working conditions or education levels, or also um, parts of our career, we get to use our, some of our creativity in it, which is important to us. And so it's about thinking that there's multiple levels to every career. So that's why we have that quote in there. Plus we kind of like it too. So. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna move on to our soup du jour, and that's gonna really explain why is career development uh, not just interesting, but important. Um, and so we're gonna give you kind of the bird's eye view, cliff note level about this. Some of this you probably already know. Um, it might be a review to you, and for some of you it might be newer, and that's totally cool as well. Then we know we're hitting all marks. Um, does anybody know what they're gonna have for dinner on December 14th? Anybody, show of hands? Anyone? I will tell you there's only one person I know for sure knows one item they're gonna have for dinner um, on December 14th. And where I live, we call dinner lunch, actually we call it lunch dinner, but if you're using that as your supper, <laughs> totally fine. That's why we chose the word dinner. Um, that would be Megan's, that's Megan's birthday. So if you remember December 14th, shoot her a happy birthday email. <laughs> um, but we know that Megan will be having probably birthday cake on December 14th. But beyond that, Megan, do you even know what you're gonna have for a meal? No, and I hope my cake looks that good. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Uh, don't ask me to decorate it, probably wouldn't. Um, I will tell you that I don't even know what we're having for lunch or supper today. So I'm definitely not wired that way. However, what does this relate to career development? Wouldn't it be even more fun and amazing for Megan if we had put together a grocery list and planned what we were really going to make to celebrate her birthday? Wouldn't it even be more impactful for Megan to have a wonderful birthday if we had this elaborate meal created? So this also goes the same with career development. Wouldn't it impact your students even more if they had a plan on what, how to get to some of their career goals they have in life? Does any of this sound familiar? Maybe like a personal learning plan or transitional IEP? Maybe, just maybe. Um, it's really putting things in place to help you have a roadmap to be successful in the future. And so when we look at career development, having a plan helps us make sure that we're on track to meet our goals or to have an elaborate birthday meal for Megan on December 14th. <laughs> So um, we made this into a recipe card, but really there is a really, really good way to remember um, beyond the technical skills that are important for career development, that soft skills are essential. Um, some people don't like to call them soft skills. Some people call them essential skills, life skills, non-cognitive skills, whatever you wanna call it. I mean, I'm just gonna call it soft skills today. So we have some common language. But this comes from Applied Engineering. They're out of Yankton. Anybody from Yankton here today? Well, Yankton is not representing, apparently, um, that I can see. <laughs> anyway, Applied Engineering is this great company. They make, I believe, airplane parts, I believe. 
But um, their accountant once told me that they look for employees to have the three A's. So they look at them to have aptitude. So are they able, do they have the ability to be able to learn the skills that they need? Do they have the right attitude? Do they really want to come to work? Do they want to learn? And do they have the appetite? Do they have the appetite to want to learn even more? And so that's called the three A's. We will be giving you a visual to that one. Um, but it shows that that is just as important or even more important than those technical skills because you can teach someone just about anything if they have the right aptitude to be able to learn it. But if they don't have the right attitude to want to be there or work well with others, if they don't have the appetite to want to learn more, are they really going to make it very long in that company? Probably not. And so I, I really think this is important and very easy to remember. So the three A's, we'll show you a visual in a little bit. Um, Heather asked if we can have the career deck emailed. Heather, are you able to access it on the TSLP website? I would try that first. If not, you're welcome to email us at the end. We'll be happy to get all the materials sent your way. Okay. So once again, it's really important to have everything in place when it comes to career development, as I said earlier. One other thing is there is something called a career development umbrella. So it really shows that career development starts um, as early as elementary. Usually when we ask people when they think career development should start, um, they typically say high school or middle school, but really you've got to get your pipeline started even younger. And so the key um, focus for career development for elementary is awareness. So thinking about what types of tools do people use in different careers? What types of careers are out there? But also, how do you work well with others? Um, standing in line well with others, following rules, those kinds of things, those soft skills. Middle school is when we really dive into the hands-on, and that would be career exploration. Um, I would say any chances you have to get your students in middle school to career camps or any opportunities like that are great. This is a really good time for your students to consider um, what they think they might like and just as importantly what they don't like. Think about any jobs you've had in life where you're like, well, now I know I never want to do this the rest of my life. Um, that is essentially the same uh, with doing career exploration in middle school. You're deciding what you don't want to do and what you, you are interested in. And then in high school, we hope people start thinking more about what they like and get prepared for those areas. So the typical career preparation experience you might think of would be an internship, but there's plenty more of them. Keep in mind that this is a fluid continuum. So maybe you have a student in high school that realizes, I don't want to go into cosmetology anymore. I, I did a job shadow and I don't like it. That's totally fine. They don't have to be fully in this career preparation phase. They might start exploring other careers or maybe they might start becoming aware of additional careers related to cosmetology that they might like. With all of these ingrained is work-based learning. And work-based learning is essentially any way that is related to business and industry that helps students um, become aware um, engaged and exploring and prepared for careers. So that could be anything from having a guest speaker come to the classroom. It could be going on a tour at a business. It could be having an informational interview virtually or in person um, all the way to an internship. So um, I would say project skills. Anybody work with project skills? That would definitely be work-based learning to a T. And then why would you want to utilize career activities? Um, we present this to um, like uh, regular content teachers, so maybe a math teacher, for example. And so we usually like to highlight this slide especially. It's really good to get those soft skills honed in for your students. Um, it's a great brain break. So if any of you work with students and they're really, really frustrated or maybe they just have been looking at that math problem too long, it might be good to take a quick brain break, get them engaged, get them excited again by using any of these activities, like pull out your career deck and start using that to help them refocus, recharge. Um, also, like I said, it gets students very engaged. So uh, helps them connect the dots about how they might use something later on in life. Okay, so these are the resources that you have in this Google, or Google link. 
Um, so the three A's, visual, there's also a definition of work-based learning with some example work-based learning experiences. There's an infographic on soft skills. And then this you might find particularly useful. Um, it's based on a survey to South Dakota post-secondary institutions throughout the state and it's to find what soft skills they find are the most crucial for academic success at their institutions. So it's South Dakota focused. You want this one? You can everybody explain. Um, we thought this quote by Gordon Ramsay, one, most people know who Gordon Ramsay is, but another one is that it really fits well with the soft skills and grit. So I've had a lot of success. I've had a lot of failures. So I learned from the failures. We really liked that quote by Gordon. I think that goes so well with grit and perseverance and all these skills that we would like to have ourselves that we would really like to see our students um, have too. Oh, and you can borrow and use any of these quotes you want as well. If you decide to make a chef themed, you know, nook in your classroom, go for it. Okay, should we move on to the appetizers? I know I'm getting hungry for some apps. Okay. Here's you the want to career take worms and career ABC. Okay, so let it start with career ABC. I'll have you pull that up and then I can kind of explain it a little better. So this one, um, if we were in person, everybody would get their own sheet, but as a group today, we are going to complete a career ABC careers, which um, you can probably see by the sheet here. We're going to list a career for every letter of the alphabet. So doing this virtually, we'll have you guys go ahead and type careers in the chat box and we can help Andrea fill in some of these careers. We don't have to do the whole thing, um, but we will do it as a group together virtually. So we can go ahead and get started. If you guys have a career that starts with, we have an architect for A. Right. Oh, or an astronaut. What about B? Or an artist, all oh, great. Banker, a barber. I don't know why I can't type in B, but we'll go to C. A, we have a dog walker for D. I can't type in that side for some reason. Let's just go A, C. Okay. All right. We'll go down the, the right side or the, the left there. side there. Sorry. Construction worker, electrician. We have a G. Geologist. Huh? I don't know why I can't type in those today. We'll just go off of these three for now. That's weird. Who knows? Interesting. You should be able, yeah. you, if you double click, it doesn't work either. No. Who knows? All right. Whatever. So you can, we also have a Word version. So we'll give you guys the Word version versus the fillable PDF. We thought this might work best for the presentation, um, which maybe it won't. But that's all right. So we, um, this activity you can play virtually by using the chat box or you can have your students unmute one at a time if you call them out or um, you can have them work in breakout rooms if you set them up in breakout rooms through Zoom, you can have them work together. Um, but this activity you can be used in a couple different ways and we'll show you that in our um, in-person slide. The other activity we want to show you for the appetizers, since you know appetizers you can't just get well, one kind. Share what? What we do with this? I was going to share that on the slide where we have the pictures of it. Oh, okay. All right, we'll go to this one then. So appetizers, you always have more than one. So we want to give you a career worm activity as well. So this activity works as you use the, you list off one career and you have to use the last letter of that career to start a new career and you keep building on and on. So again, you can have them do this um, on their own using a, the sheet of paper or you can do it as a group. You can use a whiteboard. That's a perfect way to engage students at the beginning of a, of a session or a group. Um, it's something, it's a good time filler as well. So we will, um, we will use one of the careers from our, but let's use firemen. We'll start with firemen. That's one out of the chat, the chat box. Um, if you guys have a career that starts with N, you guys can either unmute your line and say it, or oh, we have nurse, we'll use the chat box. All right, what about an E? An engineer. Okay, an R. Career starting with R. What about robot? Oh, robotics. Robotics. Okay. All right. What about what about an S? A scientist. We'll do one more. 
starting with a T, a teacher. That's a good ending one. There we go. Perfect. So you guys can, uh, again, you can do this on a whiteboard. You can do it virtually using, uh, we just have it in a Microsoft Word document. You can have the students do it individually, independently on a piece of paper. You can group them up and have them work together. Um, it's just another way to get them thinking about different careers and it's kind of gets them to think about careers starting with different letters. It gets the, the creativity and the mind flowing career related. Just a simple um, activity for an appetizer. Andre's gonna go back to, and then, okay, so if we were in person, uh, this is where I was gonna show some of the different ways we use ABC careers. Um, we will, like a lot of times if we're together, we give, give everybody a minute or two minutes or we always set a time and they have to fill out as many of the ABCs as they can. So there's 26 careers, but you know, some of the letters are harder, the Qs, the Zs, the Js, there's some weird letters, obviously. And so if you give them a certain amount of time, they get as many as they can, that's great. Um, another way we do it is everybody gets their own copy. Um, we also set the timer, but then we make it more of a challenge. So we say you have to have careers, in order to get points, you have to have careers that nobody else in the room has. So it also gets the creativity thinking like you want a career that nobody else in your class, if somebody else says it, then you have to cross it off. If nobody else says it, you get to circle that one and you'll get a point for that one or however that might work. So you can pair them up to do that. You can do it independently. Um, we just like to have different ways of doing it. And then another way we do it is if you guys are familiar with the 16 career clusters, you can do clusters, you can do industry types, you can do characteristics such as indoor or outdoor, but you can give the different groups, say um, one group has to fill out ABC careers with all careers that are in the manufacturing career cluster or all careers that work indoors or all careers that only, um, that that need no education or further education or all careers that need a four-year education. So just different ways we'd like to challenge the students to think a little bit harder or differently. Um, you can do the, all these things with either career worm. So you can do the worm as in they have to be creative with their words or they have to do all the words within a certain cluster or you can do that with ABC careers. So we just like to share um, some of the different ways we have used the activities as well. So then David, also, I think, oops, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think we might use that with our students, one of those. Anybody? Brain break. Thanks, Shan. I see you nodding your head. That's good. Thanks, Deb. All right. Awesome. Some hands are raised. Great. Go ahead, Megan. I'm sorry to interrupt. No problem. So I was just also going to know when um, in person, we also like uh, give the lesson plans um, and the activities as well. So we have those posted on our Google Drive. You'll get the lesson plans, you'll get the um, activities as well. We couldn't post the fillable version, which obviously didn't work today, but if you're interested in getting the fillable PDF, the one you fill in versus having a Word document, the Word document is posted, but if you have want the fillable PDF, we can get that to you as well. So again, that's on the Google Drive, so, or the TSLP site is linked there as well. Thanks for the shout out, Bev. Um, all right, we did mention that the Department of Labor and Regulation has uh, some wonderful career development resources, and so we wanted to point them out here. Um, we will, I think we have a link on our Google page already, yep. so you can access them easily, but they have a ton of career publications that you can use. Um, there's a really good one, I believe, if you go to like a career fair that they can use as well to be engaged. Um, I, I feel like this is a gem that doesn't always get utilized as much as it should be from our education side. And so just know that it's here. One of the really cool publications they have is the Hot Careers. And that shows careers that are predicted to be not only high in demand, but also high wage. And so it's going to be predicted for the future. They update this every so many years. And so it, it does change throughout time. Um, but I would really suggest you check that out. How cool would it be for our students to be able to be um, employed easily in South Dakota, but also being paid a decent wage? So I think that's something good to note. It also has on their Hot Careers webpage, it breaks it down by types of education too, so that you can see that there are some high wage, high demand occupations that take little to no post-secondary training to some that take the doctorate level post-secondary training, so the whole gamut. All right, I cannot pronounce this guy's last name, so we're gonna call him Chef Paul. 
Chef Paul says, if an architect makes a mistake, he grows ivy to cover it. If a doctor makes a mistake, he covers it with soil. If a cook makes a mistake, he covers it with some sauce and says it is a new recipe. And so something to keep in mind um, when we're, we're working with students, we might make some mistakes at times and that's okay. When our students are working on their, their academics or looking at career, they might make some mistakes in time, but it's okay. This is a journey and we're in this adventure together. Also working through the whole COVID-19 pandemic, I think we've all had to give each other some grace as well, right? Or having, um, you know, maybe a fillable PDF that I couldn't type in some of it. It worked <laughs> out, we're all good. We move on to salads. Sure, I mean, the apps were better, but salad's good too. <laughs> No, we love this one too. So we're just going off the menu. There is no, um, there is no rhyme or reason to the order of these um, on the, the menu. So if you don't like salad, it's still a really cool activity, I promise. So this one is called Korea Riddles Tic-Tac-Toe. And there's a couple different ways you can play this game as well. Um, Andrea and I are gonna show you a virtual way to do it. And then we can walk through some of the other options as well. So this is just done in PowerPoint and Andrea has a couple screens she can see. So we're gonna, um, go ahead and do this. And the rules to tic-tac-toe are um, you have to, one player gets the X's and one player gets the O's. And the first player to go, so if we say X's go first, if Andre wants to be an X, then she would pick a box, whatever box she wants. She reads the riddle and then both players have to agree on her answer, for whatever the career is. And if they don't agree, she still gets to finish, like she gets to play until she puts an X on the board. So she would just pick a different box, read the riddle until she gets to put an X on the board. So we have to agree on it, but she still gets to keep going until she gets a box. And then, and then it's the other player's turn to, to play as well. So we will go ahead and demonstrate this for, for you guys to see how we play virtually. All right, do I need to go first? You get to go first. Awesome. I'm gonna pick this one in the middle. When there's a fire at your house, I drive a truck and put it out. I think that would be a firefighter. I agree with you. So I'm on the PowerPoint on my screen that I can face you and I can just drag it and it shows up on the slideshow. It's kind of cool. We've played before as well without having multiple monitors and we just end the slideshow and drag them and then we start the slideshow again. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an easy way. Or if you're just going to do this activity with students, you can just put this slide into or a couple different boards into a presentation and just have the kids never present and just use the slide to drag and drop. Um, so I am going to, I'm going to pick a corner. So I'm going to pick the um, corner that says I use a map and dials and all of that to tell you where the weather's at. And I think that's a meteorologist. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pick um, the one at the bottom by yours. Nope, I'm gonna pick this one. When you fly to visit around, I take the planes off the ground. Would that be a pilot? Sure, yep, I will agree with that. Awesome. Then I am going to pick the one that's going to stop you. And I am going to say, I work in a store and sell you things like bracelets, watches, and diamond rings. So I'm going to say that's like a jewelry store clerk or salesman. Yep. Salesperson. Um, I think I'm going to go with the one in the top middle. I place each brick carefully on your house or fireplace. Um, I think that's a ballerina. Uh, no. So then I have to pick a different one, right? Yep, so it's still your turn until you get to put an X on the board. Um, I'll go with the one at the bottom. I write songs that you enjoy to sing and listen, girl or boy. Songwriter. Yes, I'll take that one. And so I wanted to show you one where you disagree, just so you can see how that plays out as well. Um, and then how you just keep going to a different one like Megan had said in the directions. So I am going to try to stop you again. I'm gonna pick the top one and say, I place a brick carefully on your house or fireplace. And I'm gonna say that's a brick layer or a mason. Yes, I agree. Um, I am going to go with the bottom right corner. I drive far distances in a semi with a trailer. I deliver everything from animal to food. 
I'm going to say a truck driver. Yes. And I'm going to try to stop you again. I put pipe, I put in the pipes so the water will run. In every building, my job must be done. I'm going to say a plumber. You got it. Perfect. Oh, I'm going to take the last one so the cat can win. I paint and draw beautiful scenes and hope you know what it means. Um, we played this yesterday and I said, I'm an artist on the boardwalk by a beach. <laughs> Very descriptive. <laughs> yes. You can be an artist on the beach. So anyway, that is how this game is played. So you get to see for yourselves. Um, also, let me go to the next slide and we'll let Megan talk about that one here. Yeah, so if we were in person, there's six different game boards that are already made that you guys can get on the Google Drive. But the way we would play in person is we hand out the boards. So every student can get a board or you can pair them up and then um, do it that way. And we play one round where you get everybody to agree and we just have them actually write on the paper. They get to keep the paper or you can use markers if you want to keep the boards. Um, if you like want to laminate them, you keep them and use them again or whatever. But we just give them, to, give them to the students. And then what we'll do is we'll say we need a student from group one to pair up with a student who was in group three. And we'll just have the students work it that way. So we'll pair them up by number. You can use whatever method you want to pair students up, but we partner them once and then we swap. We usually do about two rounds. You could probably do get away with three, but then it's about time to switch to a new activity for the students. Um, but that's one way we use it. Again, there's six different boards and they all have answer keys. And then we also have um, the lesson plan and um, the boards posted in the Google Drive as well. And the, the yeah, you said the answer key already. That's probably the yep, helpful thing. Yep, piece. there's answer key on there as well. And then um, this activity was actually developed by a South Dakota school counselor as well. And one of um, the cool things she shared with us when she created it is she used it during March Madness. So she set up a bracket for the students to do the tic-tac-toe, um, compete against each other with a tic-tac-toe. So that was one way. And she just kind of did it, I think she said over a month. So like each week she would go to the next step of the bracket. Um, but that's how she used it with students. There's also a lesson plan on SE My Life just called Career Riddles. So similar to Career Deck, um, the, the facilitator could read out some riddles at the beginning of the, the class and the students would guess what the career is as well. So you don't necessarily have to use the tic-tac-toe boards, you can just use the riddles as well. Very so nice. that was the, the salad. Next is the main course. Oh, I love this main course. Pizza, right? I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Um, this is a really fun activity called career pizza. And so the cool thing about this activity is you don't even have to use live pizza. Um, you can just use a picture of a pizza. Um, so we're actually going to practice with an apron. But the way this works is that you think of any type of career it takes to produce an apron as you see on Megan's picture here. So we think of any type of career that would come into play with the creation, the production, the distribution, the selling, the buying of that apron. So Megan, can you think of any careers that would go with that? I'm going to say a fashion designer. Ooh, I'm going to go with the, um, <laughs> the news media um, person who was advertising it on the commercials. I'm going to say a store shelf stalker who puts all the aprons on the shelf. I'm going to say the farmer who planted the cotton or picked the cotton. I am going to say the seamstress. I'm going to go with a truck driver who delivered the aprons to the store. I sometimes feel like this is this the house that Jack built um, type of <laughs> story. <laughs> Uh, what about the uh, Amazon support desk who helped you place your order? Perfect. So you get the point, right? It helps people think very creatively of different types of careers that went into play to create one item. Um, so we're going to do one together. So get your chat box ready because we're going to ask you to look at this pizza right here on your slide. And you're going to come up with some careers that came into play for that pizza. So go ahead and type it in the chat box, type in some careers that were involved in that. We have pig farmer. I grew up on a pig farm and cattle farm. Farmer, mm-hmm. 
see what else we have on here. Mill worker who milled the flour. Wow, got some creative ones. Butcher, mm -hmm. dairy farmer, yep. Agronomist. Agronomist. Nice. Creative. Veggie farmer, Dinnick Dairy Cheese Factory. Very nice. Baker, migrant worker. These are great. Yes, these are great. So we usually have the students try to think about yeah. getting, getting that pizza from nothing. So if there was nothing on that screen to the bite that goes into your mouth. So any, it could be anything. It could be this server. Waitress. There you go, waitress. Great job, Doctor. yeah. I thought the same thing. Yep. Electrician, wow. Electrician who made the oven. Recycle plant for cardboard, Tim. Truck driver. Salesperson. Well, these are great, guys. Factory made the box. Wonderful. So you get the idea, right? It's very simple. So what if I just grabbed a can of soup out of my pantry and put it on the table for someone to think about how that can of soup was productive and where we're at. So you don't have to just use a, a piece of pizza on a on a picture by any means but the the title of this is career pizza for for a reason and restaurant supply another good one so yes. go ahead do you want to share this one sure yeah so if we were in person we would split you into groups we would give each of you guys a pizza so we have different pictures of different types of pizza and then we also um we set a timer and we have you um, we have the students you know we give them a minute or two minutes to write down as many careers as they can come up with that would relate to that pizza and this is similar to um, the other active abc careers and career worm as well so um we could have them um get as many careers as they can you can have them get as many careers as they can that nobody else has so that really has them thinking outside the box or you could do the career clusters again. So you could say um, only, you know, the, the dark green group, only careers from health sciences. The red group, only careers from egg, food, and natural resources. The blue group, human services. So they might have some of the servers and some of those things. So you could do it that way as well. So you can think about the clusters, you can think about the, in, the characteristics, indoor, outdoor, whatever. And then another conversation we really like with the pizzas. So I think um, there's like five different pizzas or six different pizzas. But we like to talk about how did the group um, with the Supreme Pizza end up with so many more careers than the group with the cheese pizza? And, you know, think about some of the different characteristics and, and talk about you know, fairness or some of those different things and, and how that works. So that's just another layer of conversation um, regarding soft skills about the different types of pizzas. Now you can give every group the same pizza if you want. It doesn't have to be a pizza. Um, one of the activities that I did when I was in college um, when I was working on getting my education degree was we had magazine advertisements. So somebody had gone through a magazine and pulled out the advertisements and we had to come up with as many careers as we can based on that advertisement, whatever the picture might have been. It might have been uh, a model, it might have been a truck driving by. It was just anything that came out of that magazine, but it was kind of fun because it was a tangible, like real advertisement um, versus just a printed out picture of a pizza. So, all kinds of different fun ways you can use this activity as well. And then um, on the Google Drive, we have the lesson plan and these five pizzas with the little line underneath that says, list as many careers as you, as you can. Definitely. We have a question in the chat box. Um, if teachers want to learn more about career and technical education, what are some trainings or resources that you would recommend? And can you talk briefly about CTE foundational classes? Is there a correlation between participating in those courses or actually CTE courses in general and completing high school? Uh, we do not have that information in this presentation itself, but we can talk briefly about that. Um, so for career and technical education, those are courses that are involved with essentially career exploration, preparation, and they do go foundational courses that go across any career cluster a person is interested in. So career exploration is the typical course that you would think of in mind for foundational. And any of these activities might be ones that are used in that course. So they help students explore all different types of career clusters. We have 16 of them and then different types of careers themselves. Um, and then there's courses that are more specific to career fields or career clusters. So for example, probably most of your schools has an agriculture, food and natural resources 
CTE program. So um, they, students may be taking any ag classes at your school. Um, there might be a business program where students take business classes. There's actually a hospitality and tourism career cluster where people take um, even some culinary classes kind of going with our theme today. Um, so when we look at that, um, that's, I'm giving you a very, very, very brief overview of CTE, but what I would suggest is that you attend a CTE 101 course, which is completely free to attend. You get continuing education contact hours for attending, but that does give a, a better overview about CTE itself, the career clusters, also about uh, funding for the courses to that part. Um, correlation between participating in CTE and completing high school. Across the board, we see more students that complete high school have participated in CTE courses. So it seems to engage students even more um, is what we've been finding out. Yeah, and I don't know, um... I don't know the most recent numbers, but I know like last year's data or two years ago, it was like 96% of um, students who have taken two or more courses in CTE, cor CTE courses um, have graduated high school, whereas the state average was about 87. So if that helps a little bit, like I said, I don't think those are necessarily last year's numbers, but those are recent numbers um, that were South Dakota specific numbers. Yep, awesome, great and question. Then, Andre, do you want to speak a little bit on the graduation requirement piece? Yeah, so graduation requirements, students can take approved CTE courses to meet a graduation requirement. Um, so students are typically required to complete one unit in any combination of either approved CTE courses, a world language, or a capstone experience. And it can be in any combination. And so um, that's one way CTE courses can meet a grad requirement. The other way is that we do have with our new graduation requirements, we have what are called advanced endorsements. And so one of those is the advanced career endorsement that essentially just shows students have put in um, extra rigor into career preparation. Doesn't really matter on what their end goal is. So whether a student wants to go into the workforce right away or they wanna go and get a doctorate down the road, it's for anyone. But ingrained with that would be taking CTE courses and earning an industry recognized credential. So if you think of like OSHA, anybody heard of OSHA 10 hour general safety? That's a certification, an industry recognized credential. So um, if you are attending the virtual CTE conference, the beginning of August, I will be presenting on graduation requirements. Look at that, you'll never get rid of me. Now that you've been to one, one session, right? Um, we so have, also free to attend. We have uh, more information on what our office offers as well um, during the agency roundup tomorrow. So if you jump on um, during the agency roundup in the morning, we um, have more information, not necessarily specific to um, those questions, but we have more information about what our office does and what we offer too, so. All right, let's go on to this quote here. A recipe has no soul. You as the cook must bring soul to the recipe. Um, this one, I really want you to feel that as yourselves inspired. So you went into the teaching profession for a reason, right? I hope you went into it because you have a passion to make a difference for students. I I'm hoping this um, quote really speaks to you about um, really it's what you do can help impact a student years down the road. And we, when we hope in terms of career development, we, ho we hope that we are planting seeds to help students really find a fit for their life. So they, it might change as they go, but at least know some things that they are good at, that they want to do, and just as importantly, that they don't want to do. Okay, we're gonna move on to dessert. This is one of my favorite activities because this one goes with developing a plan. Um, developing a goal. So when you think of your students thinking of what they might want to do after high school or any goals they have, this is a really good way to visualize it and break it down. So this one is called Escalator. Um, that dessert looks really good right now, by the way. So um, this, we did not include this PowerPoint itself in our Google Drive because when we upload it, there's formatting issues. So if you do want to use this at all, please email us. It's also available on SD My Life to download too. So go ahead and grab your pen and paper and you're gonna mark 
one through three on there and you're gonna have three questions that you get to write answers to. This is totally personal for you. So um, that's why I said in the beginning, you don't have to share anything that you write down today. This is for you, okay? Um, you can also, if you want, you can answer this in the, um, taking the stance as if you're one of your students, if you want, that's fine too. I just wanna let you know that this is your info. We don't have to see any of it. All right, so this is about what's your possible story when we're doing this escalator activity. So where you see um, number one on your paper, please respond with what you would like to become. So this doesn't necessarily have to be career focused. It could be anything, but what do you see as your goal of what you would like to become? And this is what we call your future self. So what would you like to see that future self be? Go ahead and take a moment to write that down. All right, everybody get theirs written down. We're gonna go on to number two. Okay, so by the part where you mark number two on your paper, you're gonna answer this question. So what are you now in relation to what you might become? So when you just thought of your future self, where are you currently at in relation to where you want to become? And this will be called our current self. All right, we all get there. Maybe a couple more seconds here. All right, we'll go on to the next one. This would be question number three on your paper. Um, what are you afraid of becoming? So go ahead and just list real quickly what you're afraid of becoming. Um, and this would be called your feared self. So what are you afraid of becoming? All right, and those who have their cameras on, when you're done, if you wouldn't mind just looking up and I'll know that I've given you enough time. Okay, thanks guys. All right, so um, you may have students who have never been on an escalator before. So I'm going to tell you what an escalator is, just like you probably would with a student. With an escalator, um, typically it's automated where the, if you're going down, you don't have to walk down the steps. You just stand and it goes down by itself, right? Okay, so the reason I'm telling you that is because the next visual is very important to know what an escalator is first. Um, so, as you can see in this photo, here is the future self, here is the current self, and there is the feared self. This is an escalator, and the escalator is automated to go down, but we want to get to our future self, right? We want to get to that goal. What would happen if we just stand on the escalator and do nothing? Where would we land up at? We would land up down here, right? At our field self, feared self. So doing nothing to get to our goal is gonna get us where? Down here, where we don't wanna be. What if we move very, very slowly, like turtle pace? What's gonna happen? We'll probably be at the bottom. Thank you, Megan. Thanks for responding. We probably still aren't going to get to that future self, right? We're still going to be at the bottom. What if we're working hard? Maybe we even have a plan on how to get working hard to get up to there. We're going to make it, right? So on your sheet of paper, what you would be doing, I'm not going to make you do it right now because I just want to show you an example, but you would be drawing or writing things that it would take to get you to your future self. You'd also be writing or drawing things that it would take to get you to your feared self, meaning if you're not moving fast enough or you're moving too slowly or you're not moving at all, that's how you're gonna get there. So let's do one together. Let me get my web browser up. We're gonna go to Sketchpad. Um, this is a free tool that you can use as well. You can draw, you can write on it, it's kind of cool. So we're gonna do an example together. This person we're gonna say is a 10th grader. 
and this person wants to become a video game designer for, for this person's future self. And the feared self would be living in mom's basement, like, oh, I don't ever want to live in mom's basement. Mom and I don't get along anyway. This would just be horrible. So what I would be asking this person is, well, what would it take for you to get to living in mom's basement? Like, what would happen? And maybe the person would say, I don't do homework. So I'm going to put no homework. Okay, you're just going to have to use your imagination that says homework. Um, what would another thing be? Maybe not come to school? Maybe no job? We think of after school? That'd be pretty good tailspin into living in mom's basement after high school. What would it take now, where we are right now, to get to video game designer? What would be some ways there? So now we're going to think of the positive side. So what are some concrete things that we could do to get us there? Maybe one of them is to do a job shadow. Oh yeah, I found this yesterday, didn't I? Paintbrush. There's a shadow. There we go. Um, so doing a job shadow. Maybe it would be... Um, Going to school. Maybe it would be making a professional online presence. So... Um, they could record their own and post them to make a professional online digital profile presence. Um, they would also be applying or exploring on SD My Life about what programs offer video game designer. Like, does Dakota State offer it? Maybe. Maybe I decide I'm going to go to Dakota State and then get up there. So this is a way to visualize how you can get to your goal and just as importantly, what your potential pitfalls are that could get you where you, you don't want to go. So let me just show you, we're gonna go back to our slideshow. Yes. Somebody had posted in the comments that using the recipe of having attitude, aptitude, and ap appetite and technical skills. Yes, that is great. Well, Thank somehow you. I got to the wrong slide. Let me just scroll on down. You probably don't want to see that one. Where is it there? <laughs> Okay, let me see if I got this. We'll just have to slide through. Okay, just bear with us for a moment. La 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 la. <laughs> Sometimes a little music goes a long way. Okay, we went through these. There's the, the one. So if you download our information, you'll see a document that has this on there for people to draw on it. Um, we'll show you an example in just a minute. But what does this all mean, honestly? I think you probably get it, but if you want to talk to students about it, it's really about exploring opportunities. Also, um, thinking about what's out there and what isn't. What, what is it going to take to get me to get to my goal? Also, learning about yourself is really important. Um, what, would, what is motivating for me to get to my goal? Because what motivates me is probably not going to motivate Megan. And she might be different, or maybe Bev has something different that motivates her. Maybe Becky has something different that motivates her. And so we all are different. So this is very personal, like I said in the beginning. And also um, develop a plan. Essentially, this is your way to start developing a plan on how you're going to get where you're going. So when you're thinking about your transitional IEP, this might be a way to help develop how they're going to get to meeting that goal. Um, obviously, we're going to plug SD My Life because that is a way of exploring those opportunities and options. And we'll have a couple slides pretty soon that over give a quick overview of SD My Life. Uh, here's an example one. So this person right here, we're going to say is a eighth grader maybe. And this person's goal has nothing to do with career. It's about owning a horse someday. So he really aspires to have a horse and he has to think, what, what is it going to take to be able to own this horse? And his biggest fear is that down the road in life, he's going to live in poverty because maybe he is already and he wants to see a better life. And essentially, he's going to feel like he's thrown to the sharks. He won't have any money. And so that hit, that's his feared self. He's afraid of going there. So what's it going to take to get up here? Um, he considers exploring some opportunities on SD My Life about careers that may be involved, horses, a great idea maybe being a horse trainer or maybe a rancher maybe a farmer 
Um, he talks to a trusted adult, so maybe that's your teacher, maybe a school counselor, maybe an administrator, someone that you trust that can really help foster your interest. And graduating high school would be a really good idea. And then maybe he found a career in animal or a degree in animal science that would be really helpful. And so then this will help him get to his goal of having a horse. Now on the flip side, what would it take to get down to that feared self? Um, he thought about not really doing well in his academics because he won't be able to have the GPA that he needs to be able to get into that program or get scholarships or this or that. So does this help you see how you could use this and, and see where it all works out? Um, people don't have to draw. You can write, you do whatever works for you, but, but that's escalator to a T. Um, so when you do go to the Google Drive, you will get access to the lesson plan for Escalator and it does have the handout with it. Or if you wanna download the PowerPoint, you go to sdmylife.com and then there's educators and lessons and resources that get you to download a ton of grab and go activities such as Escalator. Or you can email us and we'll send you the PowerPoint. Yeah, if we can send it. I don't know if we can, I think it might be too big of a file. That's what I was gonna say. So the Google Drive does have the PDF version of the slides for Escalator. We just weren't able to, if we uploaded it as slides, it reformatted everything for us. So this is one of my favorite quotes as well. An apron is just a cape on backwards. So this is just another presentation Andrea and I have done, be your own kind of superhero. We use my kids capes, so they're a little on the short side, but we had a lot of fun with that presentation. So we just really like to think about how an apron really is just a cape on backwards. Any career, um, you can really relate to being a superhero or a superpower, so. You can do anything, right? You can do anything, yes. All right. Coffee or tea. tea. Mm -hmm. So as Andrea had mentioned, um, there is a lot of information on SD My Life, um, the landing page, so the page you go to sdmylife.com. If you go to the educators tab and you click on lessons and resources, there's a ton of grab and go stuff there. But then after um, students logged in, there's also a ton of great resources. So we wanted to be sure to share that with you guys. Um, every student, grades six through 12, has access to SD My Life at no cost. And they can access it. The easiest way to access it is using their K-12 email address and their K-12 email password. So they can just go to sdmylife.com and click login and use those things. Otherwise, um, an educator can give them access as well with um, a username and password through the, or username and then they create their own password through the program. So one thing they can do on there is they can explore careers. So here we're looking at the chef profile. Um, they can search careers. They can get to the careers in a number of different ways. And we'll talk about that in a second. But on the careers, it'll talk about um, the cost. It'll talk about the education. Um, it'll talk about the typical day of, there's a female and a male interview. Um, and then there's also, um, I think I made it, I think I mentioned everything, but there's also a link to, go ahead, what? Working conditions. Oh yeah, working conditions. So the, the next one that Andre brought up was college exploration. So there's also um, a huge bank of colleges on the program. Uh, you can learn about what it costs to go to college. You can connect to all of their social media sites or to their contact information. Um, you can see, get a kind of get a feel for this, this school. And then my, one of my favorite parts about the, the college exploration is at the bottom of each college page, um, there's a map and students can kind of do a virtual tour of the campus as well. So they can um, grab and drop a little person on the map and they can virtually see um, a lecture hall or the campus outside. Um, so there's lots of cool things they can do with the, the college exploration as well. Then each grade level has four interactive lessons. So the lessons are career related, they're college related, they're financial related, um, they're related to students' learning styles. So there's all kinds of different lessons within the program. Um, and we have a, a link to share with you guys as well on what the lessons are. But um, there's four lessons pre-populated per grade level for students to complete um, and like I said, it goes through everything. So if you guys are familiar with the Department of Labor's reality check, there's a 10th grade lesson in there that's very similar to the reality check, but it relates to students' careers that they've already liked through the program. So lots of interactive things you can do within the site. Another thing you can do is academic planning. One thing to note with Zello is that educators have to have set up the academic planner for the students to be able to go in and do this four-year plan. 
So that's something that there's a little prep for. Not every student can just log in and plan out their courses. There is a little bit of prep work for that, but it is available to all schools. There's self-assessments. So um, some of the assessments are the career matchmaker. That's one that a lot of people are familiar with. It will match students' interests up to um, careers that would be a good fit for them. There's a skills lab, which is um, connecting students' skills to um, careers of interest, and then personality styles and learning styles. So lots of great um, ways to connect students to careers that are a good fit for them. The ACT test prep is another um, product or thing offered, feature offered through SD My Life. Um, it's free to all students 9, 12. So your sixth through eighth graders won't have access to it, but all 9, 12 should have access to method test prep. There's two full length exams on there. So students can use those as like pre-test, post-test. Students can just go through them at their own pace. One thing I like about method test prep is that the students can do sections at a time instead of sitting down and taking the four hour or whatever it is exam. They can do, if they only need help with English, they can do the English test. And then there's also lessons, quizzes, all kinds of stuff on there. The page that's showing right now is the evaluation test and it's my most favorite to share with people. Um, they are, you can see the four different sections there, but it's a, each of them are like less than 15 questions. They're very short. You can see 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 14 minutes, um, very short exams, and it'll predict what the students will get on that part of the ACT. So if you go in and you take the 10 minute English one, it'll predict what my score would be if I took the full, full length English exam. So I really like that evaluation test. It kind of helps students see where they're at without having to take the four hour test. So that is um, the things that are available on SD My Life. If we were in person, we would give you a handout, a flyer with the same exact information that I just shared, the assessments. And then we'd also give you a document that has um, all the interactive lessons per grade level. So we have links to those on the Google Drive. Um, this is a fun one. We've presented with this chef theme for a couple different conferences and workshops and so if you can't tell, we just enjoy if we're going to do a presentation, we're going to make it not only fun for you, hopefully, but also fun for ourselves. And so um, our kitchen is for dancing. And so uh, chalk like it's hot, whip it with a good, just beat it and can't touch this. And so we hope that you've been enjoying your time with us today and that you've gotten some really good resources. And really, don't just take it from us. Take it from the food credit, right, um, which happens to be me. Uh, so we're just going to do a quick recap of what we learned today, um, not necessarily of the activities, but about career development in general. So best practices for K through 12, the main focus for career um, or for elementary is career awareness, career prepper, I can't talk, career exploration for middle school and then career preparation for high school. And ultimately, you want this to be system wide for career development. We do have a very quick post test. So we're gonna go ahead and do this really quickly. Let me see if I have that on. Oh, nope, I'm gonna go back to my presentation here and we'll just oh. click on the link. While you're, doing, oh, while you're doing that, can we say the code word? Yep. The, okay. code, word, the code word is careers. So um, fill that out on your credit form to get credit for the session. Thanks. Awesome. Again, the Thank code word is careers. That's some very kind words posted. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Okay, so you'll go back to menti.com and you'll type in the code 22287. We'll go through this pretty quickly too. So menti.com 22287. We just want to see if you um, hopefully got some takeaways out of today. Um, we want to see where your comfort level is. We want to see if we did our job like we planned to. So, true or false, you can only facilitate career development in person. If you answer true, then you probably were taking a little uh, snooze during this past hour. All right, we'll go off of the 19 for right now, or 20, just so we can go to the next question. But you're correct, it's false, so we know that you got that. That's good. One person answered true, that's okay, but it's false, just wanna let you know. Um, next question, which of the following resources can you use for career exploration and preparation? Is it SD My Life, uh, Department of Labor and Regulation, Department of Education, or all of the above? So 
this is great. I am glad to see that um, we got, got the message that you can use all of those to facilitate career development. That's great. And hopefully you got some resources that maybe you weren't aware of already. And last but not least, how do you feel now about using career development activities when working with students in transition? So we're back to our Wordle. Be excited, prepared, better, more confident, encouraged, um, inspired, resourceful, awesome, engaged, happy, resourceful, more confident, excited, looks really big, that's awesome, driven, wow, that's a great word, creative, that's great, I'm glad to see that, even if you still feel slightly overwhelmed, we went through this pretty quickly, I don't see that listed there, but it's okay. Oh, I do see it now. It's okay to feel overwhelmed still. Like we don't expect to totally change everything in one hour's time, but hopefully it gives you some ideas of things that you can implement right away. All right, we'll go to the next last part here, which is just our dog cooking up some wonderful items. And I think we'll just exit out of that and we'll go to our final quote for you, don't judge each day by the harvest that you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. So keep in mind that maybe today um, you, or tomorrow you might feel like you're not making as big of an impact with your students as you want to. Keep in mind that you're planting those seeds. And so hopefully that those seeds will grow into a beautiful, magnificent plant down the road to help these kids be successful. Um, so this is from a different workshop that we did with a celebration theme, but we thought this would be a very helpful quote for today's um, session. And last but not least, this is our contact information. So if you want anything from today that you aren't able to access or you have more questions, whatever, feel free to contact either or both of us. Um, we do have the link here to get to that Google folder, but also you can find it on the TSLP website too for the conference. So either way you can get there. If you experience technology issues, just holler. We're more than happy to help. Other than that, um, that's our culinary expertise brought to you. Hopefully you enjoyed your meal before your lunch. Thanks for attending everyone. We hope you have a wonderful rest of the conference as well. And we can answer any questions that you might have. So if you have any questions in the chat box or if you want to unmute your mic, um, we, can, we can answer any questions as well. Yes. Thank you, Megan. I kind of forgot about that part. We do have four minutes left. So we wanted to end a little early in case there were any questions. Thank you for the kudos, everyone. Thank you, it's very appreciative. Thank you so much, ladies. Oh my gosh, my head is just spinning with all of the ideas and it, you know, sparks new ideas for us um, as TSLP staff, like when we're working with students, like, oh, we can do some of these things. So great. Um, I don't think anyone can walk away from this session saying they didn't learn anything or didn't get any resources. Definitely. Thank you so much, ladies. Bet. So there is a question about um, lessons for grade three, five. Um, so what the South Dakota Department of Education provides is we just provide um, SDMI Life powered by Zello for grades 6 through 12, um, but Zello does offer um, a product for, for elementary. It's called Zello Elementary, and they do have um, a career assessment, so like a matchmaker for younger grades, and they also have um, different lessons and activities for grades 3, 5. Um, and I'm not sure what size a group of students you're looking at, but we do have some schools in South Dakota who have chosen to purchase that on their own um, using different funds from their own school. But I think it was very affordable. And if you um, have questions, you can um, email me. So the product is Zello Elementary. And my email is megan.tatum at state sd.us. It's on the screen there, but it's also, I just put it in the chat box. Um, and I can connect you with Zello and you guys can um, work with that as well. So they do have a really cool, um, they have it broken down by what K through two and three through five. Mm -hmm. So it's developmentally appropriate for those different grade levels, which is really nice. 